In this video, I'll be going over 20 essential tips and things to know for new macOS users. This will help you to learn some of the most used tools and tasks on a Mac, so you're aware of how to operate most of the functions needed for everyday use. Let's get right into the video. So starting us off with number one, I'll be talking about how to go and switch between full screen apps with the trackpad. So if you want to go and do this, let's say we open up Google Chrome and we put it into full screen mode. And if we want to swipe back to our desktop, we take three fingers and we just swipe. And so you can do this and for however many apps you have, you just swipe with three fingers on the trackpad. The next thing that you can do with the trackpad is pull out the notification center by using two fingers and swiping from the right edge. And I found out it works best if you take both of your fingers and put them off of the trackpad and then move them on there. If you want to view all the apps that are open right now, just take three fingers and swipe up. This is called mission control. To open up Launchpad, all you do is you take one thumb and put down three other fingers and then you swipe inward. This will bring up Launchpad which has all your other apps on there. And if you want to get rid of it, you just spread them out. And then once you're on this desktop area, if you want to go and show your desktop without any apps, you do the exact same motion except you only spread out. And then that hides all your windows and it just shows you your desktop. So if you have screenshots or something or other files on here, then you can go and quickly view them without having to minimize all your apps. All right, so the next tip is Spotlight Search. So to go and do this, just click Command and Space. And then you can go and search for any file or search up anything you want on here. So if you want to go and do a quick calculation like 10 plus 10, and there you go. It will give you the answer right here and you don't have to go and open up a calculator. Spotlight can also be used to go and search for files. So if you have something downloaded on here, then you can go ahead and search for those. The third tip is about Siri. So if you want to activate her, she's in the upper right hand corner. And when you click on her, then you can go and ask her any question you want. So let's say you want to know what the weather is like in Cupertino. You can go and ask that. What is the weather in Cupertino? It's currently partly cloudy and 63 degrees in Cupertino, California. All right, the next tip is about how to take a screenshot on here. So if you want to take a screenshot of this Tesla, let's say, all you're going to do is click Command, Shift, and 4. And what this will do is it'll bring up a little icon right over here where you can go and basically size out however big you want the photo to be. So if you want it to be this big, you just release and there's your screenshot right here. And then let's say that you want to go ahead and take a screenshot of your entire desktop on here or your entire screen. What you do then is you click Command, Shift, and 3. And you can see here that now the entire desktop has been captured. Now if you want to go and edit this, let's say, then you have all these editing tools up here that you can use. And so you can add on different drawings and different lines and angles. So if you want to go and mark something up, then you can always do that. And a common thing to do is to add a signature on here. So there are ways to go and add it on here. So if you want to go and draw your signature on the trackpad, then you just press any key to be done, click done, and you can go ahead and paste your signature on here. Another helpful tool is being able to add text. So you just click this text button and you can click anywhere else on here and add it. Probably the most used tool will be how to crop things. So this, you can just kind of resize the window and crop it to whatever you'd like. Then when you hit done, it'll save it and that is now your screenshot. The next tip is about Finder. So if you want to go ahead and view any of your documents or folders, all of these will be on the left hand side. And this is kind of our dock area where we can go and see all of our drives and all of our different like sections and folders. So you just go over to here and if you have things that are in different tags, then you can navigate to them. And if we wanted to let's say view our desktop screenshots, then we can just click on these and double click them to open it up in preview. However, sometimes this can be kind of annoying if you're going through many things and you don't want to have to just keep on clicking, opening it, and then closing it out again. So what you can do is you can just click on it and click the spacebar. This will go and open it in just kind of a quick view. And if you want to close it, just click the spacebar again. And you can do this for all of the photos. So it makes it a lot easier to quickly see whatever you're doing. And especially if this is in a list format, then it makes it extremely helpful. So speaking of that list format, you can go and change things from a grid to a list 
to these kind of columns where it has a list and then it shows a preview right here and then this one where it shows all this extra information on the side. So you can kind of choose between all of that on the fly and so that's pretty helpful in macOS. So the next tip that I'm going to go over is how to transfer files from an Android phone onto your Mac. So to go and transfer these files, you'll want to go into Chrome and type in Android File Transfer and download it. Once it's downloaded, just open it up and run it. This is also how you go and install an app is by taking this and dragging it over into here. So to use Android file transfer, all you want to do is just open it up, it will come up with your phone, and then you can just go and search through the folders, find whatever you'd like, and then drag it to your desktop. You can also go and open up Finder and drag it over to whatever folder in there that you want. And that's how you copy files using Android file transfer, and that's also how you install an app. So just like what we went through for the trackpad gestures, what you're going to want to do is swipe inward with four fingers using your thumb and then three other fingers. This will bring up your menu for all your apps. This is also called Launchpad. So this is one way to do it. And another way is to click this Launchpad button right here. That can go and open these up too. Another way that you can do it is go Command Space, kind of like I taught you how to do Spotlight Search, and type in something that you want. So if you want Google Chrome open, and you just type that. If you want messages open, you just type it and it'll open up. A fourth way to go and open up apps is to go and use Siri by saying, hey Siri, or just clicking on the button right here and asking her to open something up. Open photos. And there it is. The next thing we're gonna go over is this menu bar and what it has on here. So this first thing right over here is our notifications and our widgets page. So here we can go and see any new notifications will come up and pop up right over here. And to dismiss them, we just click the X. And then over here will be all of our widgets. So if you wanna look at stocks, our calendar, weather, you can do that here. You can also click edit widgets and add as many things as you want from their podcast, screen time, notes, another clock. And so you can do all sorts of things over here and add them over. The next icon up here is Siri, which we've already gone through a few times. And again, it's just an assistant that you can ask questions to. This button right here is like your control center on iPhones, but now it's on Macs. So when you click on it, this houses things like your Wi-Fi information, Bluetooth, and AirDrop if you have other iPhone devices. And over here you have Do Not Disturb if you want to toggle that on or off. You can also go ahead and adjust keyboard brightness over here. So if you don't want your keyboard to be very bright right now, or if you want it totally off, you can do that, or you can adjust it and turn it fully on. And you can also do screen mirroring, so if you want to airplay it to some other device, then there's a toggle for that. And you can also adjust your display brightness along with your sound. Another thing over here is basically a now playing area, which will go and show whatever music is playing or whatever video is playing, and you can go and pause and stop it. This right here is just Spotlight Search and this time it's a button right up here. So if you don't want to go and do command space, then that is a way to go and activate it. This is the network button right here. So if you click on this, it'll bring up your Wi-Fi settings. So if you want to toggle it on, off, it'll show what network you're currently connected to. And if you click on other networks, it'll go and show other networks that are nearby. If you want to open up system preferences, just click down here on the system preferences button on the dock. Another way is to go into your launch pad and you can go and find it over here. The third way that you can go and look for it is to go command space, type in system preferences, and open it. Anytime you need to go and customize or change the setting, it's all in system preferences. So while we're in system preferences right now, we're going to go over how to go and change the input and output for volume of your speakers and also your microphones that you have connected. So if we go over to the sound controls, so if we go over to sound, click on that and if we go over to output this will go and show any devices that we have connected there are no other devices connected right now other than the ones built into the macbook so this is where you can go and change them and you can also change the balance of it so if you want it to lean more left or more right 
you can change those settings. If you want to go and change the input source, so if you don't want the MacBook Air microphone running, and instead you want some other like Blue Yeti microphone or any other external device, then this is where you're going to go over here and change it. If you need to change the input volume of the microphone at all, then you just slide this up and you can also slide it down for less volume. So if you want to adjust your volume in smaller increments instead of these larger ones, what you can do is click the shift and option key and then adjust your volume. This will go up in smaller increments as you can see. Another way to do this is to just go over here to the control center and you can also kind of adjust it more finely over here. The next thing I'll go over are some of the key commands that you'll want to go and know. So let's go and type out a sentence real quick. Alright, so we have this written down here. If you want to go and cut this, you can go and do Command X. Then if you want to paste it, Command V. Let's say you wanted to copy it, Command C. So you'll notice that these are very similar and are actually the exact same as Windows controls, except instead of using the control key, we're going to be using command. So for all the things that you normally use control for, switch that over to command in your mind. So if you want to make this bold, highlight it, click command B instead of control B. If you want to go and italicize this and have it be bold, then you just do command I. So there you go, that's how you go and control everything. It's pretty much the exact same for a lot of documents as it is on Windows. Let's say you want to open up a docx file, but you don't have any Office apps on here. What you can do is just double click it, and it'll open it up in Pages. This is available on Macs, and when you continue through here, then you can go and look at your document on here. So here it is, and now you can just go ahead and edit it and do whatever you want with it and you can add in whatever other new things you want, and you can also create your own text documents. So if you also wanted to go and open up a file that's an Excel document, or if you also wanted to open up a file that's a PowerPoint, then you have those kind of equivalents with Keynote and Numbers. Numbers is essentially an Excel replacement for Mac, and Keynote is essentially a PowerPoint replacement for Mac. These aren't usually as powerful as the PowerPoint and other Office Suite apps, but these can at least open up files and edit them if that's all you need to do. And a nice benefit of this is that it all comes free with the Mac and updates are also free. So you never have to go and pay anything for this. If you want a screen split on your Mac, what you do is you take your cursor and hover it over the green expand button and click on whatever you'd like. We're gonna put this onto the left side of the screen. It'll bring up a full screen menu and now this is on one half of the screen and we can open up this other document and put on the other. Then you can also go ahead and resize it however you'd like. And here it is. Just know though that these are in full screen mode. So if you wanna go back to your desktop or see any of your apps, you'd have to drag all the way down or you can go and swipe with three fingers to the left. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please leave a like and consider subscribing to more tech content every week. If you have any other recommendations for videos that I should make with the M1 Max, please let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time on Tech Device News.